I just made the same app in these seven different programming languages, and those are Java, C Sharp, Rust, Go, Python, C++, and Ruby. For some reason, let's not start with Python and start with Rust. Stop it. Get some help. I have no knowledge prior to the programming language called Rust, so I opened YouTube, as anyone will do, and searched how to install Rust. Again, as anyone will do, and I found this guy, and he told me how to install Rust in, on my computer, and gave me the instructions, and it was very helpful. So, as any new programmer, I wanted to write Hello World, but I didn't know how to write Hello World, so I didn't open YouTube and open ChatGPT, and I prompted him to write Hello World in Rust. Uh, but I didn't know how to make a project on uh, Rust. Then I opened YouTube and searched how to make how to create a project on uh, Rust. Again, again, as anyone will do. Uh, but I didn't do it properly. This is the way you have to structure your Rust project. But this is the way I made it, which is totally wrong. As any Python programmer, well, please don't blame me for this. Then I had to learn something called cargo for some unknown reason. Then I prompted uh, the command prompt uh, cargo run and the print hello world uh, worked and I was happy. But I had no idea on creating that app because there are modules you should install. And uh, as a Python programmer, I somehow said cargo install the module. But you, uh, you can't do that. You have to use uh, something called the TOML file, which is the pubspec.yaml for a Rust file. So this is where you put your dependencies uh, your modules and so on so uh prompted uh chat gpt to give me the command so i could install this but uh th there was no easy way uh, there was no way that uh, cargo uh some command would work so i had to create some toml file a toml file so i uh I prompted chat gpt again to give me uh, to give me what I, uh, what uh what code should be in the toml file then uh it actually uh, so then it gave me the code then i pasted it then there's you have to cargo build but it didn't work and that's because i told you that the the way you structure your code you have to put the uh, main.rs the main.rust file on the src file but i put it on just the folder so that gave me error so i asked the chat gpt billions of times but it didn't work so uh, i opened youtube and then I finally found out why I haven't, uh, why it hasn't been uh, working all this time. Then I finally uh, op make it, made a f SRC folder. Then I put my main.rust file and the uh, and the module worked, and I could import it in my file. I had uh, wasted like. 20 minutes uh, coming back to chat GBT on and creating the uh, creating the random password generator and this is what it, and this is what it looks like to make a uh, random password generator now let's uh, run it so what we have to do is we have to cargo build then uh, let's see it's building it's building it's building uh, first then now let's cargo run so as you see the generator password is this random gibberish so we could use this uh we could use this for uh creating a new account if you want an in-depth video of these uh, projects i made uh you you could raise this video to 1k likes then i will create the video on how i created this Python. So you probably know that I'm a professional at Python programming language and I have lots of experience since I upload mostly Python videos. So I already have a Python installed, but uh, if you want to know, Python uh, to install is very simple. Just got to go to python.org and click on the download button. Then the mod most of the models are already installed. And if you want to install, just have to type in pip install the model and it's pretty easy. So uh, this section will be short while I will be creating the random password generator. So I will show you how to create it. First, let's import random, then import a string module. Then we'll make a function that's called generate password. We're gonna make the length uh, 12 right now, uh, but you can change it as much as you want. So the characters are gonna be the string dot ASCII letters, plus the string dot digits, plus the string dot punctuation, uh, and plus the string dot punctuation. Then let's return uh, quotes join 
random dot choice of characters. Uh, then we'll say for uh, the underscore in range length. Then now uh, we will say if underscore name underscore underscore equals to uh, underscore underscore main underscore underscore uh, double equals here. And then password length equals to int input enter the length uh, of the password. Uh, then we will say uh, we will say generated password will equal generated password with the password length or with the password length. Then we will print the generated, then we'll print the generated password as the generated password. Now let's run. Uh, okay, wait a second. Uh, let's uh, say Python making something dot py. Let's run it. Enter the length 50. As you see, this is a 50 character, uh, 50 character password that we could use for making our, an account. I really wanted to run the C++ on VS Code, and I searched it on YouTube, and I found this video, and it installed the .run extension on VS Code. Then I installed a C++ uh, pack, but it didn't work. Uh, lucky for, luckily for me, I tried out some Unity someday, and uh, I installed Visual uh, Microsoft Visual Studio. Then I already installed C++ uh, the C++ package, and that's like 1.7 gigabytes, and that really saved my time. So I opened Visual Studio 2017. Then I created a console app, and Hello World was already uh, written. So I just ha had to click Run, and it actually worked. It was awesome. I had no idea and I have no experience on C++, so I asked ChatGPT uh, what I should do, so I had to include some packages or modules, whatever you call them, uh, IOStream, CSTLib, string and random, then I made this function, then I uh, made the main function, then called it, and it was pretty good. Let me show you the final result. So this is the code. I have these imported. Then I made the string function, a generate password. What this means is that it'll return a string. Then there's the main. Uh, then it'll return an int, zero. So I made this function. Then I called it here. Then I counted it. So let's run and check. Let's just click on local Windows debugger. Then uh, it says enter the length of the pass uh, password, uh, let's say 50. And as you see, uh, the generated password is this. This is totally random, and we could copy it and make a new account out of it. Now let's go to Go. Get it? Get it? Actually called Golang, and I have never used Golang before. I just watched. Uh, I just uh, saw a video talking about Golang, so. I open VS Code and then uh, I, I open VS Code and then I install the Golang extension. Then after that, I wanted to run it, but I had to install uh, Go. So I went to the Go installer. Then I installed 1.21.5 version of Golang, uh, and it, which is the file type of MSI. Create the pass the random password generator. So I imported math and time. Then so then I imported some modules. Then I created the function. Then uh, it worked. Let me show you the final result. I I had no idea it would work. But it did. So this is the code I. Uh, this is the code uh, that is used to make. That is used to make uh, the random password generator. I have actually learned a lot while doing this. I learned about uh, passwords and uh, how to return, how to make a for loop. Uh, it was the learning curve is very good for Golang. So now let's run it. So uh, uh, let me open the prompt. Let me open the command prompt. Then we're gonna say go ran main dot go. So let's wait a little. It says enter the length of the password and uh, let's say 600 for some unknown reason. And then see, this is a 600 character. This is a 600 character uh, password we could use for making an account, but totally, I don't think this would work. So next we have Ruby. Again, I have no idea. I've only uh, watched Mike Dane making a tutorial, but I haven't watched it because I was not interested in it. 
and uh, I have no experience. I just only heard it. So I wanted to ins uh, so I need to install it. So I went to uh, rubyinstaller.org. I I will link the link for the programming languages and don't forget subscribing while doing that. So after I clicked on download and it was a whopping 128 megabytes. I didn't think that any programming language would be this big and the files I wanted to install were too much so i wa i opened the ruby interpreter online so that would be a billion times better so i wanted to print hello world and it, it was quite straightforward you just had to say print and then hello world so now i will uh, go to creating the random password generator and after 10 minutes of writing code here is the final result so as you see here this is the code uh, this is an online ruby ide uh, that's because the Ruby installer was uh, too much of a file size and it will take basically years to install. So uh, after then, uh, I've typed in this code. Now let's click on execute. Oh, see, this is the generated password with length of 12. We can use this to creating an account and this is with 16 and we can use this to creating an account. And now this now C sharp. Uh, besides the others, I have a little more experience of C sharp because I went to game development using Unity, and at that time Java was uh, Java wasn't an option, so C sharp was the only thing uh, you could use to code on uh, Unity, and I use that, and I'm uh, know a little stuff, so this uh, won't be as hard as the other programming languages. And for this one, I will use uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2017, the same editor for C++, because that is the one compatible. Mm. So this is what the code looks like. We, have, we are using system and system.txt. We have the functions that will generate the random password. And so let's run. Click on start. So see, the generated password is this. So if you don't believe me, let's run again and you see there's another password uh, that is actually random and you can use this for an account now for the final one java so for java i also used an online java compiler so uh, there was no need for installing anything and it was pretty simple uh but i really hate that just to uh, write in hello world you have to use so much amount lines of code and it was really disturbing for a python program now then i went on creating the random password generator so uh i'll meet you in 2000 years 2000 years later so 2000 years into the future I have created a uh, I have uh, I have created a random password generator. Uh, it's like 52 lines of code, so why not show you the result? Okay, so uh, this is the code uh, for the Java. Uh, uh, this is the code for the random password generator. It's 52 uh, lines of code. So let let me run it right here. So it says generated password. This so you could use this for a new account as I said for the previous languages and it was good so this is the end of the video thank you so much for watching like subscribe and comment what video sh I should do next and I'll meet you in this video